Good afternoon, sports fans. I'm probably Mark Evanier, and while this is not exactly the Cartoon Voices panel we do each year at Comic-Con in San Diego, it may be about as close as you're going to get for a while. 2020 will be the first year they don't have the big con down there since, uh, well, I'll tell you how it works. The last summer I didn't go to a Comic-Con in San Diego was the year I got out of high school, which was 1969. I've been to every one of them, and I've hosted hundreds of panels at that convention, many of them featuring cartoon voice actors. I'm mainly a writer, but when I write a cartoon show, I usually cast the actors and direct the voices. The recording sessions are so much fun, and the actors are so amazing that I thought, hey, maybe the guests at Comic-Con would like to see this sometime. So about 20 years ago, I blackmailed a bunch of cartoon voice actors to come down to San Diego. We did a panel. The next year got bigger and bigger and bigger, and now we do them two or three of them every year. We're going to try to make this work online without laughter and applause. So please laugh and applaud in the comments section and hold your questions until later because they'll scroll way out of the, uh, out of the, away from by the, by the time we get to that part of the show. And by the way, we're having some technical problems. You're going to see them along the way. We're, we're just going to have to cope with them. I'm going to bring in our panelists now. We're practicing vocal distancing here, not social distancing. This is vocal distancing. These people are now in their on their own recording studios in their own homes, so they're absolutely safe. Panelists, come on in, all of you. Hi. Uh, Hello. No, you, Hi. You, you, you're in your own homes. You don't need the masks. Take the masks oh. off. Right. Take oh. the masks off. You're gonna. Go you're on. all gonna sound like droopy dog. Please. Oh, that oh. God, that's not even on my resume. I thought you guys were coming to my house. Uh, folks, the reason Bob Bergen looks so puzzled right now is that for some bizarre <laughs> reason, he can hear everybody except me, the host, at the moment. Bob, you still can't hear me, can you? You have you no can, idea. Yeah. Let me tell you some damaging secrets about Bob Bergen. I'm going to tell He's you some damaging secrets about you, Bob. No, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He'll never know. Anyway, uh, to, to, to my right in the box yes. is Julie Nathanson, folks. To the right of her is Fred Tatashore. Right below me is Bob Bergen. Woo! To the right of Bob is He's Phil right there, Lamar. Bob. And to the right of oh, Phil is Secunda Wood. Thank you all for showing up here today. And they all <laughs> the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. Oh, sorry. Thanks for now, having us here. I'm going to now introduce each of them individually and ask them to tell you some of the voices they do. But first, let me preface this by saying that um, uh, these actors cannot tell you all they're doing these days. Most cartoon voice actors find themselves at times under things called NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. He's giving the NDA speech, Bob. I'm t yes. Oh, <laughs> This is how they do the daily briefings of Trump. Anyway, the... <laughs> oh, thank you, Phil. <laughs> really? So they, they are not allowed to tell you what they're working on, everything they can, but these people are working all the time, and even if they can't tell you all this stuff. Julie, would you tell Bob that I'd like him to tell us who he is and where he comes from and what he does, please? Bob, I'm Mark Evanier, and I'd like to ask you to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and the, the voices you've done. Please introduce yourself. Mark, your, your shorts are too tight. I, I, you sound very, very, very different. Um, hi, I'm Bob Bergen, and I, I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my deaf pants right now. Um, I'm, a, I'm a voice actor. Uh, I've been doing this for almost 40 years. I've got some of my favorite people behind me. We can play Who Are They? If you can see them, that's that's wait a minute, that's Paul McCartney right there. And that's Cagney. And that's Brando. And then we got we got wait a minute, hang on. I got coordinate. We got that's Boris Karloff and Bob Hope. And there's the Star and Robin Williams is over wow. here. Anyway, Neat. so that's that's those are my, my my many heads that I admire and and there we have it. Wow. Tell us about the voices you've done and, and what we would know you from. Okay, so you probably know me uh, from Living Tunes. Woohoo! Woohoo. Um, Woo <laughs> the the Pussy, the Tweety, the Little Bunny, who hates that big old putty cat. Yes! Um, oh gosh. Um, I do Luke Skywalker for a lot of Star Wars franchise stuff, and I awesome. just sound like myself. Um, 
you know, when you ask us about our, I'm, I'm still, I'm so permission about the technical stuff right now. I can't re remember a thing I've ever done, but, um, <laughs> but people out there have IMDB. So look me up. I do voices. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bob. Nice. That's an understatement. Julie, right. same same question for you. Same question. Okay. Great. So I'm Bob Bergen. These are my oh, that's not how this works. <laughs> uh, no. I love that that gets a laugh from you guys, but I have no idea how I laugh like that. Um, so I'm Julie Nathanson. I've been doing voices for a pretty long time. Um, and I started out doing a cartoon called The Data Project, which was a spinoff of Batman Beyond. And I got to hang out with my buddy Dietrich Bader and uh, the wonderful Bob Goodman who created that show. And I was Ro, uh, and I would say things like, V, come on, let's go. Or, uh, we'll get you your freedom, Z, I know it. Um, and from there, I've done a ton of video games and a lot more animation. Uh, from I've done a lot of Final Fantasy games. So from the uh, Final Fantasy 13 to and Light Lightning Returns and World of Final Fantasy, I am Chocolina. The beauty's all mine, but the products can be yours if only you'll show me the money. <laughs> um, and uh, on Elena of Avalor, uh, I've played um, Scarlet Turner, who's very proud of Norberg. And she came in swinging from a rope, very much like me in real life. As you can tell, I'm very <laughs> Um And uh, in uh, Far Cry 5, I play Jess Black, uh, who is, um, you know, uh, a, a delicate little flower with a crossbow. Um, and she, uh, she says, Everybody's got a talent. Mine shooting arrows in the heads of people who want to kill me. Uh, and uh, very similar to that, on uh, Shimmer and Shine, I played Athena, the glitter genie. She can Yay. turn anything into glitter. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Phil Lamar, yeah. sir. Phil, tell us, sir? tell us where we've heard you lately. Oh wow, sir, Phil, have I been knighted? Yes, That's you are. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Use your real voice, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I shall use my English voice. Uh, actually, that was the voice I did. I was the voice of Jarvis in in Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Just the star. Uh -huh. Repulses at 90%. Um, but one of my earliest jobs in voiceover, in particular, was um, the voice of Virgil Hawkins, a.k.a. Static Shock. And yeah. I was doing that back at uh, Kids WB. <laughs> When Julie Nathanson was about this high. <laughs> uh, I have also been lucky enough to uh, voice the samurai known as Jack. Yes! John, John Stewart, Green Lantern of Sector 2814 Woo! on Justice League. Jedi Kit Fisto in Star Wars The Clone Wars. <laughs> and um, I was also the voice of Hermes, um, the certified bureaucrat on Futurama. But I can't do that voice unless you're yeah! requisite me with the proper paperwork. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Phil. Secunda. Oh, Hello. Hi. You're on. Ooh, okay. Well, I was busy fangirling over my fellow panelists. Um <laughs> I let's see. I'm in a lot of Netflix shows like Dragon, Rescue Riders, I'm Mama Ironclaw. Rescue Riders, help me find my babies. <laughs> and and um, a game, Indivisible. I'm Zara. I love music so much. <laughs> and I've also done Shuri in some um, um, Marvel video games. No what way. are those? <laughs> nice. <laughs> and um, just various stuff that you can find oh and also i'm um frosty's mom on fast and furious which Ooh. is like one of my favorite 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 gigs so yeah like oh my son is going to go to space camp uh, okay <laughs> i guess <laughs> so yeah Yay. segunda thank you yeah. mr tedashore hello I love that. We're, I play a lot of bad guys on that. Um, yeah, uh, well, I, a lot of people know me from uh, The Hulk. I hope yeah. this microphone set up. I don't know why it's clipping out. <laughs> oh, 
Um, and, and a lot of a lot of superheroes, Hulk, a uh, 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 beast who's a lot uh, calmer, and and, and oh. thing. What's your problem? What are you yes! doing? Oh, yeah, you know. uh, but <laughs> yeah, I start doing uh, on Invader Zim and Family Guy, which I'm so happy to keep going on. Uh, it's a show where you play, you know, I'm a utility player on that. So it's like, where do you, I play like Bono, Mark Twain in a toilet, you know, in one fun. Um, like American, you do. That's American, a dream. American dad, uh, <laughs> robot chicken. Um, oh, now uh, Looney Tunes. Um, oh yeah. Yosemite Sam. Yay! Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then a lot, a lot of video games, uh, soldier 76 reporting for duty on overwatch. Mm. And, um, Bad Gears of War, you know, uh, Saren from Mass Effect. Um, uh, Troll Hunters, very excited about. Uh, the, um, I I play uh, Arg, the big troll, and it's nice. a lot of fun. Oh, we can do a lot of stuff on that show. It's woo woo. And Star Wars, General Tarp, Tarples, and uh, a bunch of um, aliens for a lot of the Star Wars projects. Hey. Yeah. Okay, Fred, we have some people here who will leave us if you don't do Koala Kong, Komodo oh, Joe, God. Komodo <laughs> Joe. I got to hear that. I got to hear it. But first, okay, let me get, let me, let me, I don't you leave. I'm going to have to get a, I have to get a sample. <laughs> I can't remember how the voice goes. I apologize. I love it. I'm so sorry. Please, uh, I love, I love, I love that it's true though. We do, we do sometimes have to look up our own voices to remember what we've done because it's been years sometimes since mm -hmm. we've done it. Yeah, it's or if you're friends, it's been fifty thousand since then. Right. <laughs> it's well, true. that's why I was so impressed with Secunda. I mean, how do you remember the lines from shows that you haven't been doing for twenty five years? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I did them all last week. That's how I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hear you. We can hear you. All I, I can hear, all I can hear are the two ladies. But I love that Fred was look. Fred, you and I were on Mark's panel at Comic Con a few years ago, sitting next to Misty Lee, and nobody in the audience knew that we were under the table with our IMDb's. Yes. Basically, <laughs> trying to be. <laughs> I know. I think, what did I, I do? Think, I, 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 I think what people don't understand is, you know, we do a job and we're done. And if it's an ongoing thing, we'll remember this stuff. But if it's a game, some cartoons, it takes one to five years before it even comes out. Yeah. So yeah. I, we, we just don't hold on to it unless we're so, doing a series for five or ten. We years. love we doing it. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. Remember yeah. It then. But I will. We will look that up. I apologize, everybody. I. I by I the way, I'm listening on YouTube. I'm, I'm, I'm it's a little delay. So I'm kind of <laughs> Are you? That's awesome. It's hilarious. Can you play it for me? It's a little bit. It's a, it's a little bit of a weird delay, <laughs> but I'm trying. And I'm, this and is so hysterical. I mute myself when I go to YouTube. Oh, you poor thing, Bob. You're you're such a professional that you're that you haven't actually exploded at this point. Uh, right. This is just part of, <laughs> this is just part of the course of our home recording, right? It now. is. Right. It really is. Oh yeah. God. I, I really have, is. I have worked for the number. I have worked for the number of actors who were on a 10 second delay in life. So it, it just <laughs> works out that way. Sorry about that, no, no. Let me interrupt here. Here, here. So, uh, Julie, translate for me to Bob. Bob, Bob can hear yeah. you. All right. Yeah, um, Bob can hear me. Mm -hmm. All right. Bob, 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 who can you not hear? Bob, um, Mark would like to know who you can't hear. Bob, I can only hear the ladies. Oh. You can't hear me. Uh, you can't hear me. You can only hear All me. Right. Well, in tell that me. case, I'm going to do the whole rest of the panel as Bob Bergen. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, Julie. Julie. Phil says he's going to imitate you for the right. rest of the panel. Julie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hold on. I have instructions. Tell, tell okay. Bob that Mark yeah, says since this probably can't get any worse for him, log off. Wait five. Wait, wait a minute, and then log back on. Let's see if that, right, Bob, that solves it. Mark says because yes. this probably can't get any worse. By the way, let's not say that it's twenty. Never say but that. Right. Probably <laughs> can't get any worse. Right. Log off. Wait yes, five minutes. Off. Log back on, and we'll okay. see if magic happens. All right. I can't wait to see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen either, but I'll be back in five. Okay. Five. We'll miss you. Bye. I and love that Fred's still looking up. I don't like to do it for the fans, Fred. A, Fred's, got a, a, Fred's got a task. He's got to do it. 
I'm and a I, they're gonna log off if he doesn't do it, Julie. <laughs> I, I have <laughs> the opening. <laughs> That's Maybe pressure, we, Fred. Do it. it. Maybe we don't need six people. Maybe we don't need six people out at the same time. But, <laughs> uh, I have three um, e, uh, uh, e, uh, messages, uh, text messages from voice actors who are watching us who are volunteering to step in for the to the part. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'll you, and I'll bet you Who can get are some they? more. I'll bet you can get some more. Name them. <laughs> no, I Joel Lasky, Scott Ennis. All right. <laughs> if we could, if we could get Joel Lasky on here, I'd be very pleased. That would be amazing. I would love that. Yes. That, that would be a hell. That would be some some internet reception right there. Yes. 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 <laughs> I know voice actors who today are working less than Joel Lasky. It's amazing. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> What I wanted to say here, we do it for the, for the next round of this. Why did I think this was a good idea? Uh, <laughs> it's awesome. Are you kidding? This yes. is awesome. Uh, to, to people at home watching, uh, people who do cartoon voices do not just do cartoon voices. None of these people make 100% of their income off doing voices for cartoons. Voice actors do uh, dubbing, looping, books on uh, audio books. They do all sorts of commercials and things like that. On I would camera. Like, I would, and on camera. We don't count on camera here, Secunda. We oh, have no, here in this panel, we have no respect for on camera. I apologize. Actors. I was looking at Phil. I just saw Pulp right. Fiction. I was like, that's him. Okay. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, I'd like each of you, we'll start with Julie, to tell us a couple of jobs you've had using your voice not in cartoons, something that we did not know was you, something obscure, something we're going to go, oh, she did that. And Fred Fred will, when we get to Fred, he's going to talk about Disneyland. Okay, <laughs> Julie, tell us something that you've uh, you've done with your voice other than funny creatures on, in cartoons. Other than funny creatures on cartoons. I have, for some reason, fallen into a niche of doing a lot of computer voices, Ooh. which I always funny because I think of myself as relatively human um, and kind of colorful as people go. Um, but for whatever reason, this has been a consistent thing. And um, on The Odd Couple, I got to voice this, this basically a Roomba that was running around and, and um, sort of torturing Thomas Lennon, who was a real oh sport God. about it. Um, and, uh, and, and so I was Vicky uh, speaking as the, uh, the, the, the rogue robot vacuum cleaner. But, um, but a lot of times I, I, you'll sort of hear me in games or toys or cartoons, many of them saying things like, commencing retinal scan, retinal scan complete. It appears we do not have clearance for this sector. Kindly remove yourself, or I shall do it for you. And I don't know why, um, but I know that Mark, you always enjoy the story of um, of the retail gig, which uh, which was a radio job that I did for uh, Albertsons and Acme and Cub and Jewel Osco for years, uh, where I would tell you the price of chicken every week. Um, and so, if you were listening That's to the radio, awesome. you might you might hear me say. Um, uh, shop at your neighborhood Albertsons through Tuesday for low prices with your preferred card. Sweet ripe strawberries are two for five dollars. Uh, and my family would always be like, "Hey, by the way, how much is the chicken going to be next week?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> there is an NDA on the Albertsons gig, and I'm not telling you how much. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Thank. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Fred. <laughs> that was awesome. Fred. <laughs> yes. T tell us a voice. Tell us something you do with your voice. Tell us about looping actors in movies. Oh well, that's I, I actually started doing uh, that with kung fu um, movies. That was a big thing I was doing with Miramax for a while because they were trying to upgrade like the the um, instead of like hey you get over here you know they wanted yes! to a little Latin match a little more and that was yes! that was a great way to learn on and. Um, yes, I have to. I have to. A lot of us have to do uh, voices for. Um, uh, I've had to be uh, Jeff, have to be Jeff Bridges a lot if they need that kind of a voice. Nice. So, yeah. Anyway, he's kind of in my own then. I've had to, the funniest one I had to do was uh, uh, I didn't get to do the fun lines for Snake on a Plane, but I, I got to be Samuel Jackson. 
but just like the only when he was whispering, you know, quiet stuff like <laughs> problem on the plane. Oh, that weird. is so cool. What, and, uh, Fred, Fred, what would the full J Michael, uh, Samuel L. Jackson have sounded like? I don't give a damn. No, <laughs> I am tired. Melon farmer. No, um, uh, and, uh, um, uh, yes. the weird one that people don't know is because it's such a normal voice. Is I've been the voice of Space Mountain for many years. Uh, welcome back, Space Travelers. Ten, nine, eight. You know, it's just very, very odd. Odd. Well, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's still there because I know it's all changed up now. So. It may it may be gone, but wow. uh, but that was a that was a lot of uh, fun, and and also for uh, you were talking about Disneyland. Um, <clears throat> I've had to be Vader when you when you meet. Yes. When you, and, <laughs> what's funny about that is um, we had a a whole bunch of lines. You know, you meet the guy in the suit, which is actually the real job. Like I can't believe the person can that knows how to fire off those lines and do it the right way. Do we had a choice of doing a kinder more gentler vader for when he meets little children you know because <laughs> that is that? Yeah, when you meet him he's like i sense one of you is working with the jedi you know like <laughs> and, and, and uh this is my vader can by the way and um um it. and it's so funny because that scared kids so we have other <laughs> other vader lines for like when you see the kids it's like you know you have, I see the force is strong with you. You know, when you, when you complete your training, when you complete your training, I need, you know, like it'll just, you have to so It's the yeah. encouraging Vader. Yeah, the, yeah, the awesome. kind of encouraging Vader. Like, you like, oh, oh, oh. that's the kind of works. The kind of Vader. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, Fred. Now, now, awesome. now, now, hold on, everybody. Don't say anything. We're going to, I'm going to bring Bob back in here. Hey, Am Bob? I here? Bob, can you hear yes. me? Can, can you, you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yay! Yes, we got it. All, All right. right. Thank you very much, guys. Callbacks are Thursday. You guys were great. <laughs> Good. Thank it was, it was you. normal to you, Bob? It was, uh, it was... No, but that's why you were great. Okay, thank you. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is Mark Avenue. I hope that you have a great time on our panel. Okay. <laughs> it's happening. All right. Okay. Secunda, yes. Secunda, what are some things you've done with your voice not in animated cartoons. Well, two things that I can think of that were super fun. When I very first started, when people didn't really know how to use apps and I was non-union, I did like a tutorial for a app that was um, like a karaoke app for The Voice. Remember that show when it first Ooh. came out? And so you had to sing and then maybe the chairs will turn maybe they won't and so i was like the tutorial voice like i'm gonna show you how to use this app for the voice let me show you how to <laughs> sing i'm gonna show you what you do to get those chairs turned around you know I, so that was cool that was like my, my first like cool gig and then um i'm also in a museum exhibit oh, called cool. math alive <laughs> that's been traveling around the world. It started at the Smithsonian Museum and it's been, it was in California in January and it's been all over the world. And so basically like, I'm like called, there's like these bot like sisters who are like, I know you don't really like math. A lot of people think math sucks, but it doesn't. It's so fun. Let us show you how fun it is with snowboarding and picture taking and all kinds of amazing things where you apply math. And it's more fun than you think. And my voice has gone around the world like for five years doing that. Isn't that crazy? That's amazing. That's very crazy. So kind of, you got to come out of your shell. I'll try. <laughs> you made I'm a wallflower. <laughs> anyway, Segunda so, so is going to bust out of that little box and invade Phil's and Fred's pretty soon. I know. Because eventually, no, we'll, let me we'll have, have a giant. Let me <laughs> okay. That's Phil, right. Phil, <laughs> Phil, Phil, tell us some things where you, that you've done voice jobs not in cartoons. Ah, not in cartoons. Okay. Well, it's funny because when you you said you were going to ask, uh, what's something obscure you've done? Yeah. At first, I was thinking about uh, something, but then I realized it was on camera. I I was actually in a in 19, the year 1991, in a sexual harassment training video for the food service industry. Stop it. <laughs> what? Here's, here's what to that, what not to do with hot dogs. So so many things. <laughs> That's so, and the bizarre thing is, I still get messages from people like, I just saw you. I'm like, one, where did your company, why is your company still using that? And two, <laughs> where did they find a VCR? 
know? <laughs> <laughs> All funny. right. But uh, like, as far as obscure voice stuff, I had a really uh, cool experience. Um, I did a voiceover gig in a live action show. Oh. Um, the, the Flash, the CW show, apparently is carving out new territory. They have so many masked and CG created villains that they're hiring voice actors left and right. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I was the voice of Ragdoll, who is this really super creepy um, villain who can contort himself into any sort of size and shape. And, but his face is a, a cracked doll's mask. Whoa. Wow. I am, I am his voice. Suffering never ends. Ooh. And, um, and Twisty Troy is the guy who does, because I think people watch the show and think that it's done with computer effects, but there's actually a contortionist who does all, almost all of the wow. stuff live on set. That's wow. awesome. That's okay, That's thank you, cool. Phil. Bob, uh, yeah. now, now that we can, now that we're, we can talk it together, yes. uh, I would like you to tell us some voice jobs you've had that were not cartoons or something obscure you did. And would you, uh, also, even though it was on camera, I would like you to tell a little bit about your game show days, oh, your game show okay. hosting days. Well, so, so oh. I, 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 okay, I was in New York promoting the movie Space Jam on a talk show, the first yeah. Space Jam. And I got a call from an agent, the agent of the guy who was hosting the show. And she said, um, hey, listen, you were really good. Have you ever thought of hosting? And I said, no, not interested. <laughs> and I went to my voiceover agent and she said, don't be a schmuck. If they know your face, I can get you more for your voice. So <laughs> I, I, I signed with this agent and the first the first thing she had me audition for was a show called Jep, which was a kid's version of Jeopardy on Game Show Network. Uh. And and I kind of sort of didn't really want it. So I kind of like, <laughs> you know, if you don't care, you kind of get it. So yep. I went through auditions <laughs> and then callbacks and then I finally got a screen test. And the screen test was to do a half hour episode of Jeopardy on the Jeopardy stage. And the three kids who were the contestants were the three Sony executive kids who were going to their, their parents are going to hire me. Oh my gosh. Oh so, I, so, so I walked up to the kids before I started and I said, guys, make me look good. I'll buy you each a car. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we, and I, I didn't know what the puzzles were going to be. And oh with the, and, and one of the categories was famous cartoon characters. Ah. So the first one that came up, the, the clue was he lives in Jellystone park and he's smarter than the average bear. And the next one, oh my God. the next one was, oh, let's go find this olive oil. <laughs> and I just did voice after voice after voice that after voice. So cool. And the last one was, was at, at the end of every Warner Brothers cartoon. He says, hey, think, hey, think, hey, that's all, folks. So when it was all over, the producers came up to me and they said, well, first of all, you got this job. But also, have you ever thought about doing voiceover? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Well, boys, that's my day job. This is all new to me." So I that ended up getting fun, getting though. the show, and it was fun. Great, that's Great. terrific. Yeah, so, okay, some, some non non on camera stuff, Bob. Actually, a lot. My first major job was a movie called Gremlins back in the early to mid '80s, <laughs> where I did uh, creatures, mugwais, and you know, and and you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> Um, I've done, uh, I've revoiced actors in so many movies, be it the yeah. TV version. Leonardo DiCaprio did a movie called Basketball Diaries. Yeah. And, and for the TV version to take out the dirty words, mm -hmm. um, I revoiced Leo when he was stoned and another actor voiced Leo when he was sober. Stop! Neither, <laughs> neither one of us could match oh. with or without drugs. And then they had Leo oh to come God. in and try and he couldn't do it because his voice had changed too much. Oh, that's um, I've, fascinating. I've revoiced yeah. uh, Quentin Tarantino in From Dusk to Dawn. Uh, all the, wow. A lot of times they'll hire yeah. us to play. If you ever saw Total Recall, there's a scene yeah. where um, uh, it's it's Mars and it's the customs desk. And this the rather, the, yeah, the original one, the, rather, this rather large lady comes up to the customs guy. Yes. And he, says, he says, do you have anything to declare? And then her face splits open and yes. it's Arnold. Well, the actor they hired for the customs part was Austrian. 
and he sounded <laughs> just like Arnold. <laughs> and, he's, and they thought that's going to give the joke away. Wow. Do you have anything to declare? So it's my <laughs> voice coming out of his face, but I've done literally dozens that is of movies. So cool. That is so cool. That is always, that's such a good point because the, you know, in, in, in movies, you know, there's so much content that probably shouldn't be shown on an airplane just in case there's a kid, you know, watching at the same time. Right. And we do, you know, it's like, it's this little secret thing that many of us do, especially if we have the, the, the music of voice matching in our bodies, right? If sure. you can kind of catch the music, the syncopation, the sound, the tonality of voice matching. And, um, and that is, that is a, that's a funny little niche thing, Mark, yes. that I hadn't exactly. thought about that. I mean, I've, I've voice matched, um, Nicole Kidman for a, a, a um, you know, a, a plain safe film. And, and a lot of the time it's because the original actors either aren't available or right. perhaps have aged out or aren't stoned anymore. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, they're just so expensive. They're or expensive. expensive. Yeah. Or, you know, they're busy working on something else. So yeah. they get, you know, those of us who will do the imitating. And by the in. way, nine out of ten times I'll get the audition. I'm like, I can't do them, but they'll give you the re they'll give you yeah. the reference. They'll give you the reference, and the, that moment that they need revoiced, you're like, oh, I could possibly get there. <laughs> you know? That's happened to me so many too. times. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. If you're not doing a, a necessarily an impression. Like I've had to do Jack Nicholson. I'm not doing a mm -hmm. Jack impression. It's right. just like, hi, Tom, how are you? You know, like right. it's right. a regular right. like. You're you're just trying to get him in that scene, and you may not get him for the next movie because he's doing a different voice. Or who's got a phone call? I I I, I tried to turn turn off all my. Uh... I'm just okay. excited I can hear it. I'm thrilled I can hear that. <laughs> yeah, right. You're like yeah, I don't care. Well, okay. What 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 happens if you ruin a take in a session because your phone goes off? You get yelled at by Mark Evanier. You no, I never <laughs> yelled. At you never yell. <laughs> I don't yell at anybody, Bob. You really don't. Uh, no, yeah. he doesn't. All right. Um, Fred, did you ever get reference on those characters? No, I've been uh, I've been talking. All right. to you. I think oh. Somebody please send me a, get me a reference or, or or I'll look at it. Here's the thing. If we don't get it, I, I want to make sure I, I get the get that out to those people though. We have to figure right. it away. Um, maybe I'll give them my info or <laughs> okay. Well, well at the end of this, at the end of this, we're gonna give them info on how to how to because I want to find it. Could you All give right. me the specific what it was called? What's the, what's the character? Koala Joe. Something from uh this is this this is from Chelsea Cat Girl. Fred, yeah. read the read the screen. Read the screen, Fred. Love you. Oh. Uh, you're in the show. Everyone can hear you. Uh oh here. Hi. Okay. Oh, Dingo. Oh, now we got it. Hold on. I know what I'm doing here. Okay. Dingo ball. Yeah. Now I got it. I had to look at it. Okay. What? What is that from? Well, uh, yeah. Dingo. Dingo. I will start with that one right there. That's one. That's, that's something we got to make sure we do right. Yeah. There we have it. And then uh, Koala Kong. And uh, 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 here we go. I'll get those. Let me, Chelsea. What is your name, Chelsea? Let's get that. Chelsea oh, Cat Girl. Chelsea Cat Girl. We're gonna we're gonna set we're gonna get it right. Okay. So right, right now I'll get you some dingo dye right there. Yes! And, I, and I'm gonna cook some food for you. Food that you could possibly eat. Uh it might not be safe though. Anyway, that's fine. okay. Now Yay. uh moving on here. Moving on here, please. Uh, one of the things you should take <laughs> away from these panels is and what it's one of the reasons that this voice sessions are so much fun is that cartoon voice actors with very, very few exceptions, single digits, uh, are fans of each other. They all get along. They all boost each other. I don't know how many times an actor has said to me, Oh, listen, this guy does this voice better than I do. He does this kind of stuff better. Um, they're very generous with each other because even though they technically complete compete for jobs, they don't really compete for jobs. And you know, if if Bob beats you know Fred out this week for a job, Fred will beat Bob out next week, and it all balances out and it's fine. Absolutely. I'd like to ask each of you to tell me the name of one person you worked with in your career in a, in a cartoon voice session that you were really excited that you were in the same studio with that person. Um, somebody who you were really impressed that they were on the microphone across from you or next to you, and you went home and told everybody, you can't believe who I just <laughs> worked, worked with. Does somebody, does somebody want to, want to volunteer one first? Me! 
Secunda. I know yeah. it's I know it's everyone, but pick out one name. I know it's tough. That's a tough one. It's true. So many. You know I'm gonna say everyone, but okay. Um, you guys. <laughs> I got the like Fast and Furious was one of the first jobs that they like, you know, they just called me and they were like, Do you want to do this? And I was like, Eek! <laughs> like I'm, I'm at that point in my career. Do you amazing, want to right? do it? So they were like, Do you want to play Kimberly? I was like, Yes. So I showed up and Kimberly Brooks was my <laughs> wife. <laughs> and we go into the session together. And I'm just like trying so hard to be like, she's my peer. She's my peer. She's my peer. <laughs> Cause I'm just, I want a fangirl all over her. But I'm like, we're the peer. I'm like, hello, Kimberly. She's like, hi. Nice. She's not, you know, she's a normal human. So she's like, hi, it's gonna. And I'm just like, ah! I'm fine. Hi, Kimberly. So we go in and we record together. And I, uh, it was so hard to just like keep it together. <laughs> Fred, 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 you got somebody? Uh, there's so many, but one that comes to mind doing comedy with Tim Conway. You know, you're just oh. like, you know, okay. <laughs> you know? And he's just, as you know, uh, just, just the nicest, sweetest guy. And it was just great. That that was a big one for me, I remember. Because I, I, that was a big uh, inspiration. Yeah. You know, he's a big inspiration to so many. You know, oh. that was a big Phil? Deal. And he couldn't have been nicer, you know. Phil, you had somebody <laughs> special to mention? Well, actually, um, on uh, the Samurai Jack series, the original four seasons, um, I did pretty much all of the episodes alongside Mako Iwamatsu. And it's mm. fascinating because Mako is primarily not a voice actor, but he's an actor with an amazing voice. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember being in Jerry's Deli, sitting at my table, looking up, and there is a poster for, you know... Um, Stephen Sondheim's Pacific Overtures with Mako's name above the title, you know, from the Broadway run. Yeah. So being in this room with this guy was, I mean, it was a masterclass. I mean, he was so easygoing, so gentle, and then so brilliant. It's funny. He actually taught me something about voiceover that, you know, the years of work hadn't. Because I always thought it was about being a chameleon and you got to do a different voice every time. And da -da -da. But, you know, Marco has his voice. You know, it's a very distinctive voice. And one session, they handed the scripts and they said, okay, and Marco, you're going to be playing this character. And it was a character that was not his main character, Aku. And I'm thinking to myself, how are you going to have a, that voice be two different characters? Right. Everybody's going to know it's going to be in your day. And I literally remember thinking, well, as soon as the, we're done recording, they're going to ask me to revoice it. But what Mako did was he told me, he taught me that it wasn't about the voice. It was about the acting. Because oh. he took that other character and he approached it from a completely different, you know, status, completely different yeah. approach, completely different emotional state than Aku. That's and when you watch that episode, you can't tell it's him. Wow. And it no, blew my mind. Right. Yeah. Great. That's Julie? Great. Julie? That's cool. Somebody? Um, <laughs> so somebody. I knew you want it to be with somebody, somebody, anybody. Um, from 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 within an actual session, um, I remember the first time I walked into. I, I did a, a Spider Man series for um, MTV with Sony many years ago, and uh, when I walked in, you know, I didn't know who was going to be in it. They just said you're going to play Sally, and I was like, cool, I like Sally, I'll go in. Mm -hmm. And I I walk in, and I'm like, oh, that's Doogie Hauser. <laughs> and I was I was pretty excited to hang out with him. And then I turn to my right and and Mary Jane is being played by Lisa Loeb. And I was like, oh, it's just seeing me so in my house. I was driving here. And then oh Ian Ziering was also on the show. And I hadn't oh seen him. I started out on, on camera and I had known him from uh from uh, Beverly Hills 90210 a hundred years ago. So it was this like amazing little little community of, oh, of wonderful so people cool. and i i definitely was i was i was all a flutter um that was a good one and 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 i uh mark you know i have a story of running into someone i was not working with but uh go ahead, go ahead. Certainly... You, can, uh, you, you, you can tell it you can tell what it happened? okay <laughs> so many many moons ago uh, when I was working in New York, uh, there was a studio that I frequented doing some kind of ongoing gig. And they knew, everybody knew, 
that I had always wanted to meet James Earl Jones. It had been my thing. I just really wanted to meet him. And this was during the days that he was doing, you know, quite a bit of voiceover for, um, I think it was for, for Bell for phone books or something. And one day they said, you know, hey, Julie, someone wants to meet you. Oh, gosh. And I'm like, oh, cool, 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 cool. And I look and a shadow rounded the corner. Oh, my God. And I, like, I've heard this expression, like, her knees buckle. My knees fell out of my body. Oh, my God. I lost the ability to stand with any grounding. <laughs> I held on oh. to a wall oh my God. as James Earl Jones approached me. And he said, I heard you wanted to meet me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah. And like, you know, I I'd, I'd pictured this day for so long. And, 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 and what I should have said was like, oh man, Grapes of Wrath, Field of Dreams, Great. Star Wars, oh my God. But, but I said, well, you should have. Yeah. I've always wanted to meet you because I've always wanted to hear you say my name. <laughs> get that lot, yeah. Oh God. And he said, what is your name? I was oh like, Fanny, Julie Nathan. <laughs> and he said, Julie Nathanson. And I went, oh, oh my God. God. No, no. no, wait, said James Earl Jones, my buddy. <clears throat> Let me say it. Julie Nathanson. And then I died. I just dead. died. You're not even here. I'm dead. So this is this is uh, Ghost Julie yeah. talking to you now. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I mortified Our myself, but film. it was no, I'm not no, gonna no, lie to you. The best story ever. Don't even no. Oh, that thank is you. Uh, I'm not that, gonna lie. Oh, it was oh, it's okay. a great thing that worked out well. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. it was like, yeah, you know. That's true. Bob, Bob, since you can hear me. Tell yes, us, I can. Tell us, tell us somebody you really were thrilled that you got to work with. All right, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you two because I was vacillating between the two. But Julie gave us a whole cast. I'm going to give you two. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so the, I'm for the, both, which gives you permission. I, God love you, Julie. <laughs> All right. So the first one was Barbara Streisand. <gasps> Barbara Streisand did a film called The Mirror Has Two Faces. And there was a scene where a couple was was walking down the street with twins, oh twin ba babies. And I do a lot of babies for movies and TV shows and whatnot. So all they needed me to do was, <laughs> so I'm on I'm on the set, and 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 Streisand is there directing, and I I was being done ADR to picture, and I did that, and she says, I think your mouth is too big. I said, excuse me. She goes, your mouth it's too big. <laughs> I said, okay. So she's, she gets behind me and she puts her arms through my armpit. So her, her, hand, her hands are in front of my face. And so she says, all right, on the cue, I'm going to cover your face. And oh my just, God. just a month a little bit, these beautiful, gorgeous with nails oh my. And, 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 and her breasts are against my back oh my and, her, and her, and her hands are right here. And when I, on my, on the, on the, oh after the third God. beep, I'm like, and then she goes, all right, that was a little too quiet. And I said, I'm embraced right now by Barbara Streisand. Her perky breasts are against my back. I can say nothing. <laughs> and she says, Hashtag if you like, me too. She said, if she said, if, she said, if you'd like to get paid for the session, you're going to say something. So I, and, and, and it went, it went fine. Um, and then, and then quickly, my other one is Paul McCartney. I did oh uh, a God. sizzle reel for a cartoon that he wrote. And I was, I, I'm, I'm rarely starstruck, but I walked in and there was a beetle oh, and, oh my God. And, and, and he was, he, I was doing the voice of a pygmy hippopotamus. Um, like you do. Like you of do. course, of course. And they didn't, they wanted a jibber jabber sort of thing. The guy uh, was, uh, uh, Tony Bancroft uh, was directing this, this session and he'd hired me to be Bucky the squirrel in the emperor's new groove. So he thought, oh, if he can do the squirrel, he can do a hippo. So I get there and, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I forget what I did, but it was kind of a, and Paul McCartney says something like, I'm amazed at what comes out of your face. And I said, I'm amazed at what comes out of your face. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, it was like, 
you, you don't even need to get paid for sessions like that. No. You just right, just 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 yeah. die happy. So those oh. are my two. All right. These are all great stories, folks. Now, tell us how you're recording these days. You're not in sessions. You're in these little rooms you have in your homes, these private recording studios. And uh, somebody tell us the way you now record a show instead of being in a big room with all the other actors. With a lot of sweat. Yes. Okay. Well, somebody, uh, anybody, volunteer. Somebody tell us how well, it works for you. I mean, the thing, the thing is, I mean... I actually, um, my son took over the room that was my office. So uh, a couple of years ago, I converted the upper part of my garage into a recording booth with like a little office out here and then a soundproof booth. So, you know, who knew that the pandemic was coming? But that part of it has remained the same. The part that's markedly different now that we're in this sort of, you know, stay at home lockdown thing is you're not just being the voice talent. You're also the engineer. Yeah, and it's it's double the difficulty because when something you goes wrong, it's your responsibility. You know, at a regular session in a booth, if something goes wrong, you go, "All right, I'm going to go to the kitchen and grab some tea while you guys figure this yeah. out." Yes, <laughs> yes. Now, nope. You gotta you gotta figure out what's uh. wrong with your router. What's wrong with the you know the inputs and Source all of that connect. stuff. And it's, Exactly. Right. It's it's a bummer because the now the real trial is keeping your performer head going mm -hmm. while your new learning curve engineer yes. head is doing stuff. Preach, mm -hmm. Phil. Well, and, 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 and each oh and each show each show requires a different setup. Exactly. You know, yeah. They're all on different systems. Some yeah. people yeah. like Zoom, Zoo, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And like, now, these are, by the way, good problems to have because, again, the stating the obvious is we're very lucky to be True. able to work, yeah. you know, True. and do our stuff. But it That's is, the a learning curve is, is huge. And um, it is it is kind of funny, even like, um, yeah, what you got to download. And I swear, I am, I love, I can work with sound all day. I love working with sound and all that. But I don't know how to email. You know, like it's 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 hilarious. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's so it's stupid. A file. It's I'm like a whole animal. Like, oh gosh. Okay, so now what? Now what do I pro? I, can you hear me? Okay, so now what do I do now? Okay, so now I'm gonna do the test and press the thing. Okay, now it says, it says does not sit with your OS system. You know, and and you know people on the other side. We're all in Zoom. So it's all right. like you know, there's flat back and there's all this stuff. I mean, these are first world problems, but it's, it is, it is. You're well, it's new, right, Phil? You've got to keep your actor head because you got to be yeah. like, okay, I've yeah. slated. This is uh, yeah. August fourteenth. Blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah. This is a type two. It's a second thing. Look out! Oh, is that too loud? Hold on, let me change. <laughs> right? Oh, you know, like, you know, it's just, yeah. And, well, and yeah. So, no, I mean, the yeah, the worst thing is when you get really frustrated and you're tempted to go full Shatner on yourself. <laughs> well, no, and also, 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 also when you give this amazing performance and you're like, I just killed that. And then you look yeah. at the screen and it's like, error. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, and, so, and so, so my thing yeah. is when we're now we're, we're asked and, and, and like, like Fred said, every session's different. I've got mm -hmm. one show that wants me mm -hmm. to slate the line numbers and the take numbers. And I found yeah. going, Okay, line 17, take 44, ABC. And then I got to get into character. <laughs> I write! Okay? Oh, my God. So I asked this one director, may I slate in character with the intent of this scene oh. so I'm in the moment? And they said, fine. And then I thought of trying it for Looney Tunes last week. Wow. They want they want us to slate the time code, not the line number. What? Okay. Forky, let's yes. see. Forky is, is slating. Well, that was the problem. Code. That was the problem. Because I was like... <laughs> Okay, this is this is a, a, a twenty-two point fifty-five. Twenty-two point fifty-seven. It's a twenty-two point fifty-three. It's a twenty. No, it's twenty-three now. It's a, a twenty-four. 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 Oh, let's just say twenty-five. I'll wait. I asked if I could slate after. For some oh, yeah, reason, I was just like, "Can I just do my yeah. thing and then just the tail slate?" That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. So cast. Because, because was what you said is true. It's like trying to slate and then get yourself into the. And I was like, "I can't. I'm I'm not talented enough to do that." So let me just do my thing and then I'll go sleep afterwards. They were like, we "Okay." Go. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, we're we're getting a little too, we're getting a little too much crosstalk here. Sorry. Folks. All right. Uh, now, 
Quick question here, short answers. How will you feel if this is the way you're doing cartoon voices the rest of your life, even after the pandemic is over? I'll, I'll take this one. I'll take this one. Um, so, so I've had a, I've had a, a, a really nice recording setup in my home for years, um, and I, I love being able to self-direct for auditions. I think you know, it's, it's not for everybody, but for me, it, it's, it's really worked out nicely. As um, soon as the pandemic hit. Uh, you know, many of us got emails from our agents saying, if you want to be viable for any incoming work, you're going to have to make sure that you're completely pro ball. Um, for me, what that meant was adding Source Connect standard, learning the system. Um, but in the middle of that, I decided I'm going to upgrade as much as I can. So I had a studio test for an upcoming job where the engineer and I looked at my soundproofing. I hired an engineer, wonderful engineer, a friend of mine, Marta La Fuente, who um, actually took over my system remotely and helped me set up for Source Connect, taught me some stuff with my levels that I needed to shift. And so along the way, I've learned more about my system. I've, I've actually definitely upped the game for myself for auditioning and obviously for jobs. Um, I think the sound is great and I'm very happy with it. And I cannot wait to get back to our studios. Our engineers are brilliant for a reason. The studios yeah. we frequent are wonderful people with incredible facilities. And I think a seamless approach to something that for us is not second nature. And so whatever I can do at this point to bring in those engineers, I am. So I'm trying to suggest to friends, you know, hey, if you have to engineer your own session, if there's, here are some engineers who I know who might be willing to have you pay them a little bit to have them jump on and do the engineering, if you right. can bridge that gap. I like to be able to make sure that we can keep our studio friends, our audio friends right. in a business. Thousand percent. As, yeah. as it comes down to what it's like to be in a booth alone, I do a lot of work in a booth alone. I do a lot of video games and I'm generally just me in a booth, but the group records, you cannot replace the feeling of working with another person and being able to see, you know, being able to see Fred you know, yeah. I've, I've been in sessions with Fred before and I can see where like he's Lucky about you. to do something and, and breathes in a certain way. And then I'm ready yeah. to jump in because I know something's going to happen that I'm going to want to respond to because right. Crimson Widow and the Hulk are going to go head to head right now. And mm -hmm. like not being able to feed off of each other's energy, we lose something. But all yeah. in all, yes, as a quick fix, Mark, I could not be more grateful for us, for the we're ability, keeping, we're keeping working. the animators working. We're keeping yeah. production. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. What she said. But we're yeah. also yeah. right. Uh -huh. We're also we're also Nothing to add. That's there's perfect. some All there's right. something about being able to I think keep the stories going for people who need the entertainment yeah. at home Precisely. that feels for good. Sure. But I do I miss my friends. I miss you guys. Yeah. Oh. Uh, thank you, thank you, Julie. I think everybody is nodding in agreement the whole time. Yeah. Uh, now we've got to discuss how you record these good. days. Let's show them how you record these days. Would you grab the scripts that I sent Ooh. you? Ah, All right. By the way, this is this I is a cold, this is a very it. cold read. Very. This is a frozen read. This is you know let, 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 let me let me explain this. Okay. okay. Now let, let me. I'm going to. I'm going to. The the. Uh, we're doing a script we have never done. This is the first time this script has ever been done, and never done on any of my panels at San Diego or WonderCon, and. Uh, I'm going to assign the roles and give them a chance to mark their scripts. They don't know. They, they got these scripts early this morning. They printed them out, or I think put some people put them on iPads. Yeah, I and um, I'm going to assign the parts, let you mark the scripts, while I explain to the audience what we're doing here for those who haven't okay. seen this before. All right? We are doing the story of Goldilocks and the Three Little Bears. Can we look now? Yeah, yes, you can look now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I told you to get your scripts. All right? Ju Julie, you are Goldilocks. Yay! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bob, you are the narrator. Okay. All right. <laughs> Phil, you are Papa Bear. Nice. Secunda, you are Mama Bear. Yes! Fred, you are Baby Bear. Okay. <laughs> also, <laughs> also, Secunda, there is one line for a character called Mother, which you will also do. Okay. It's, near the, it's near the beginning. All right? Now, ordinarily... We don't do this in real sessions. Ordinarily, actors get their scripts. Sometimes they get them in advance. 
and my sessions, they get them directly from the printer right when we record. <laughs> I've never, yeah. I've never had a script done you know, more than an hour before a recording <laughs> yeah. session in my life. Um, we would might, we might ordinarily do a read through first. We might do a couple of rehearsals and such. We're not doing that. That when you give an actor a script and they have not had a chance to really read it in advance, it's called a cold reading. This is more than an ice cold reading because they aren't even going to be able to read the script before they get to their lines. Oh hey. nope, another, another, key another key difference. Another key difference is that in a, any sort of cold reading or professional reading, you're expected to actually stick to the lines in the script. Here you are not. You can. <laughs> yeah. I have. What uh, this, could go wrong? <laughs> this script. What is could a, go wrong? This script. I did not write this script. It is a script I found. I did a little doctoring of it. I actually, yeah. put together two radio show scripts for. Three Little Bears, one of which was very old, one of which was fairly recent. I think the recent one was trying to be more new new wave and flesh out the characters and give them <laughs> more personalities mm -hmm. and and come up with some sort of moral that I can't understand. So I have to <laughs> okay. them together. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> to, further, <laughs> to further make this difficult. Now, here's the key thing. To further make oh this gosh. difficult, you pick whatever voice you want to do your character in, but every so often I may say the word change. Okay. If I say change, the person who just read a line will read that same line again in a different voice. Oh, you I repeat like that. the line, you repeat the line and change the voice. And then as the character when the character speaks again, you have the option of staying with the new voice or um, uh, going back to the original voice. Okay. The only difference to this is for Mr. Bergen, who is the narrator. Bob, you have 20 lines as the narrator in this. I want 20 different voices out of you. Oh, I want no you to read every line differently. No, all right? pressure. no, no pressure at all. I will not call change for you, Bob. I'm you sorry. Know. I can't hear Mark. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Yeah, all okay. right. <laughs> now, we'll, we'll give you a couple more minutes to mark your scripts and, and, and get ready here. While I make a little speech, I'm going to go, I'm going to take myself full screen here and say something to people. Uh, one of the reasons we do these cartoon voice panels is because we're aware that there's a lot of people uh, who want to become cartoon voice actors. I would guess there's at least one or two watching this right this minute, uh, maybe half of you. Uh, and this is great. And there are at this time a lot of very, very good teachers and tutors out there and coaches who will guide you towards a career that way. Bob Bergen is one of the best and we'll be talking about uh, yes, that a little later. Uh, there are also a lot of people who should not be teaching and should not be taking your money. There's some very predatory schools and coaches who, who I think some of them are failed voice actors who just think this is a way to make some money. I couldn't make, I couldn't get a career, so I'll tell somebody else how to get one. Anyway, um, be very cautious. I have had a couple of heartbreaking stories called to my attention where someone kind of went to a, someone who was supposedly a voice teacher and said, uh, if you'll give me all your money, you will be living next door uh, to Dan Castellaneta in days. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way, usually. Uh, the best voice teachers, in fact, will not take on just anyone who's got money. They want you to audition. They want to see that you have some promise. They want to be able to have the pride of saying, I taught that person who now has a good career. So it doesn't help that that to just take your money and send you out unable to get work. Please, whatever you do, don't let yourself become victimized by those people. Uh, at San Diego conventions, I do another panel mm -hmm. usually, which tells more about how to break into the business. We may do one of those online soon. I'm not sure if we're doing more of these yet, um, but uh, <laughs> just, just be cautious. All right, panel. Wait, look, I've given give me you a all, second. All the time you're going to get. Oh, hey. That's it? That's it. That's all the time you're going to get. All right. Okay. All right. We're going to go here. Are you so Mark, ready? you don't want us to change voices unless you tell us I to. Will, we, can well, we, you, can, you can change yeah. voices if you want to. We can go rogue but, occasionally. But, but you much. But let's let's try it this way first. Fred okay. is walking okay. out. Fred is walking out on us. I Thank you. All right. I just I just want to. <laughs> if you don't mind, Mark, I'd like Fred, to. Set, I just want to set move. the scene for everybody because um, normally this is what would be in front of us. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Right. I want one of those. And, I left mine at the table last uh, year. Bob, 
Bob, do you have your nameplate? Bob, do you have your nameplate? Do you have your nameplate, Bob? No, I didn't have a nameplate because I was too busy trying to figure out. But I've got, I've got this. Nice. Julie, Julie wins. Julie, I have uh, mine. Wow. I have yeah, you mine. Have I have mine. Oh. I have mine. I have and mine. I have 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 mine. And this, I swear to you, this is just last year's. This is just Mark, last year's. Really? Really? What? Hey, Mark. Hoarders just called. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's a big market for my name plates. Anyway. I wonder if you had Secundus because she didn't pick hers up from her last panel. I forgot mine. I was wanted. so sad. Somebody, so Secundus, somebody grabbed yours at, at the, after the panel. I think they wanted you to autograph it. <gasps> People come up after the panel sometimes and grab these things to get them signed. I would have. I would have stole it from them and run, but <laughs> I would have signed it. We'll, we'll get you. <laughs> Secunda, it is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is remotely conceivable that if you have a little more enthusiasm, we'll put you on another voice panel someday. So you'll get another more? one. Yes. I'll do my best. All right. Um, she makes all. me look calm, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That is all the that is all the prep time I'm going to give you. All Bob, right, you, have, you, have, you have the first line. <clears throat> the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She was called that because she had golden locks of hair and she was very beautiful. Hello, my name is Goldilocks. I am called that because I have golden <laughs> locks of hair and make them kind of super beautiful. <laughs> One day, yes! she told her, she told her, she told her, and she said, Mom, she said she was going to take a walk in the woods, and her mother gave her a, a, a very stern war. Her mother said, "Her mother said, I'll oh, wait till you hear what she said." Don't you go in the woods? Do um, hold it. Okay, hold never it. mind. I was going to say something, but like my mom doesn't want to listen to me and stuff. Oh, <laughs> mother of mine, I'm uh, I was going to take a walk in the woods. Is that stupid? No. Do not go into the North Woods, my dear. Listen, there are wild animals up in there, in the North Woods, and they like to eat little girls, especially little girls with golden locks of hair, because they raise it! That's really strange, because I don't think hair tastes very good. I've been eating it for years and years, and it doesn't give me any nutrition. Oh. Don't worry, Mother dear. I will not stray into the North Woods. But the trouble with Goldilocks was that she was never wishing to her mother. And he often got her into a trouble. On her walk, she came across a sign. <laughs> oh, what is uh, where does that sign say? I don't usually read stuff. Warning, <laughs> now entering North Woods. Little girls, beware. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they won't bother me. I'm, I'm really small and my hair tastes terrible. She continued merrily on her way on a path that would take her right past the big wooden house, you know. In uh -huh. that house, there lived three bears, a papa bear. Hey, woman, when's lunch going to be ready? I'm starving. And then there was also the mama bear. I'm serving it right now, Papa. Sit down at the table. I'll give you a big steaming bowl of my delicious porridge. <laughs> oh, <laughs> porridge again. Oh, I thought you loved my porridge. You know what I mean by that? I mean porridge. And Lashley, hey, look. Well, Lashley. I eat your porridge. But that doesn't mean I love oh, your porridge. Stop. We, we oh, I, I stepped on your line. I'm sorry. You keep going. Oh, okay. Uh, um, third point. We, we need uh, we need 16. That's no. what I thought. No, we need 15. 15. 15. <laughs> I, no. Woman, let me tell you something. I eat your porridge, but that don't mean I love your porridge. Oh! Okay, now, Lashley, 
there was their son who was known as the baby bear <laughs> because, and here's, here's the killer, he was a baby bear. You are so smart. Oh, goody. Let me at it. Mama does make the most delicious porridge. Give me some of that now. You see, Papa? Yes, yeah, somebody here appreciates my cooking. Not like you, Papi. It looks hot, but I can't wait. <laughs> oh, my porridge is way too hot. No, let me try it. Ah, what tarnations? My porridge is way too hot. <laughs> By the time this porridge cools down enough to eat, we will starve to death. Change. Oh, change, Phil. By the time this porridge cools down enough to eat, we will starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> Papa says, right. we, will, we will starve to death. Nonsense, my child. I know what we'll do. We'll go for a walk in the woods. By the time we get back, the porridge will be perfect. Change. Change. Nonsense, my child. I know what we'll do. We'll go for a walk in the woods, and by the time we get back, the porridge will be perfection. Okay? <laughs> and, and so that's that's just what they did. They went for a walk in the woods, and being very trusting bears, they didn't even think to lock the front door. Oy. I don't know why we always eat porridge. How about some real food once in a while? We're bears, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Well, I don't understand. I, I thought you loved my porridge. I love your porridge. <laughs> oh, Fred, change. I love your porridge. Fred, change. <laughs> I love your porridge. <laughs> Quiet, son. Let me tell you what real food is, Mama. Oh, a few minutes later. Who should wander past their house but Goldilocks? <gasps> I guess I made a wrong turn. I should go the, the way or something. I don't know. I might. I don't know what to do. I, this is really bad. <laughs> change. Change. Julie. Julie, change. I guess I made a wrong turn. I, I should go that way. Maybe this way. Oh. <laughs> hey, maybe I'm going the wrong way. I'm lost in the forest. Yeah. I'm hopelessly <laughs> totally lost. No one will ever find me. I know who will find me. A bear will find me and eat me. Oh, yes. that's not good. Um, maybe the people in this house will help me. <laughs> knock, knock, strangers. Hello. <laughs> well, she, she ran to the front door and knocked, but no one answered. In fact, the door slowly opened on its own. Anybody there? Anybody? Yo, what's up? <laughs> Is anyone here? I'm, I'm lost in the woods and I haven't had anything to eat. I know I'm, I'm hungry. And you tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> what's that? It, it smells like porridge. I love <laughs> porridge. <laughs> So, like you know, her nose led her to the dining room, <laughs> where she like she like totally found these like three <laughs> bowls <laughs> and left there by like you know like what like like I think well like three bears. <laughs> I, I totally hope that like the people on this house don't mind if I like eat a little bit. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> Wow, oh, man, this porridge is too hot. What the? <laughs> All right, hold on, 
hold on, hold on. Maybe this bowl. Hold on. Oh, 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 gross. Too cold. Ah! Uh, I need to take this back. This is terrible. I did not order my porridge like this. I ordered it better. I'm giving you like a awful Yelp review. Um, okay, so I'm gonna try this one. Um, ooh. This one is just right. Um, I'm going to just eat a little bit, just a tiny bit. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> She gobbled down every last bit of the porridge. <laughs> now, I don't know how to make burping sounds, so um, I'm just going to ask burp. Fred to do it which <laughs> did before I finished asking. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. thank you, Fred. You're welcome. And then she staggered onto the living room, and she sat down in Papa Bear's chair. You guys, this chair is too hard. <laughs> so she tried sitting in Papa Bear's chair. <laughs> this chair is too soft. I'm sinking down. Whoa, bye bye. Finally. She tried sitting in Baby Bear's chair, Baby Bear's chair, Baby Bear's chair. Oh, but this chair is just right. Oh, oh I, I broke the cute little chair. And oh, my goodness, it's, it's sort of embarrassing. I, I need to find some place to lie down. I feel sort of, well, tired. Line oh, 33. Sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. She staggered into the bedroom where she found three beds. She decided to lie down on the biggest bed, which was Papa Bear's bed. Oh, man, more decisions to make. Fine, I'll go in this one. Oh, man, this one's too hard. I gotta find a pyrobricter. <laughs> so she switched to the next largest bed, which was Mama Bear's bed. No, <laughs> this chair is not even a chair. It's a bed, and it's too soft. I don't know. I ran out of things. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was awesome. Are you kidding? <laughs> Finally, she laid down on the smallest bed, <laughs> which was Baby Bear's bed. Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm personally uncomfortable. Um, ah. <laughs> 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 Finally, Ugh, this bed is it's just right. <laughs> and as she was fast asleep, the three bears were returning home. I ask you again, why do we even have to have porridge for lunch, mother? <laughs> Uh, well, we've always had pottage for lunch, you jerk. Oh, boy, I love pottage. That is because it is all you have ever eaten, my son. You must wait until you are older and you get to taste some of the finer things in life. Finer things? Mama? What line are we on? Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Line fifty-four. Mama, why do you not go inside? Uh, Papa, did you not see the dough? Eh, uh, did you lock it before we left? I know you didn't. You know we never lock the door, Mother. Why, on this day, do you ask now? Why is this night different from every other night? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Because it is open. Can't you see? It's wide open like someone walked right inside when we were away. Now, what if it was some dastardly criminal who wants to steal all of our things and our porridge? Now what? What do you have to say about that? Uh, hey, welcome to mine. 
But what if it's a monster, a monster 20 feet tall and, and covered with green fur with rows and rows of you know, razor sharp teeth? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Oh no, 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 not that. No, no, not, not, no. <laughs> no, not that. I mean, what if it's the kind of thing that can tear a bear limb from limb and leave his body lifeless on the ground like an old rug in front of a fireplace? He's still welcome to my porch. <laughs> I'm to lead the way into the house, Papa. But be careful. I take it real slow. Be real careful. You don't know what's going on inside there. You don't know. So just be real, real slow. Real, real careful. Uh, cautiously, they, they entered the, their house. You <laughs> see. Yes! Um, and um, and this, this, this ominous <laughs> feeling of, 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 of dread hung yes! low in the atmosphere as they, as, they, as, they, as they made their way into the dining room. And the, the, that, 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 was, that, was, that, was, that was where they saw it. <laughs> no! Someone's been eating my porridge. Oh! Summit has been eating my porridge. Someone's been eating my porridge, and whoever it is is eating it all up. Fred, change. Oh. Fred, change. Do it again. Someone's been eating my porridge, and whoever is eating it is eating it all up. Fred, change. Again. <laughs> Someone's been eating my porridge, and whoever's been has eaten it all up. Fred, change. Uh, someone's been eating my porridge, and whoever it is. <laughs> well played. <clears throat> Pops, look. Over there in the living room, like, your rocking chair is, like, rocking all alone and stuff. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Like, look at it. It's moving, and nobody's inside of it. I don't understand what's going on. And the seat is warm. Someone's been sitting in my chair. <gasps> what? This is like crazy. Somebody's been sitting like in my chair. Not cool. Yeah, man. You know, uh, someone's been sitting in uh, my chair too, and and uh, you know they they uh, they broke it into pieces, man. You know. What's happening, like in our house? It's a ghost. It's a monster. What's happening? Is it a poltergeist? What's going on? Relax, both of you. You're letting your imaginations get the best of you. An empty bowl of porridge and a broken chair doesn't mean there's a monster in the house. <laughs> <That's it>. <laughs> <laughs> What? what are you talking about? That does. <laughs> Let me out of this place! Stop! Do I have all the courage in this family? Are you going to be terrible role models for me, you young and impressionable son? If there's a monster here, we have to find it, face it, and defeat it. My son is right. This is a moment that requires courage. That gas leads out. It was coming from the bedroom. I heard it. Follow me. Slowly, cautiously, they tiptoed into the bedroom where they found. Somebody been sleeping in my bed. Seconda. Someone's been sleeping inside of my bed. I don't yes. like it. Yes. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. And she's sleeping in it right now. <gasps> oh, what a beautiful morning. 
<laughs> I've got a beautiful thing. Oh, I hear somebody. Oh, but who is it? Goldilocks screamed, ran from the bear's house, and all through the woods back to her home. She never disobeyed her mother again, and she never went into the woods again. As for the three bears, from then on, they kept their doors locked. Oh, and Mama Bear learned how to cook something besides porridge. For dinner tonight, I'm going to make roast chicken. <laughs> Finally! Stuffed with porridge! Oh. Shut up! Shut your mouth! Hey, that's good eating. I love my boy. Bravo. Thank you, Cast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. As you, 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 there'll be a playback up of this right after this. You can, it'll be on YouTube. You can watch it yourself and see how, how wonderful it was. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, Bob. What yeah. is the wait list like to get into your class? Oh, hey. well, it just got longer because we're not, I'm not teaching right now. But, but even before the uh, quarantine, it's about a four year wait. Uh huh. And, and wow. how many students do you take on at a time? You can keep the class small. Yeah, I do uh, eight eight students per class, four men, four women, and I only do three classes a year in Los Angeles. I do weekend classes around the country, and those I've I've done a couple in the last month. Uh, schools that were that wanted to fly me out, but I can't right now, so I did some Zoom weekend classes, and I might be doing more Zoom uh, weekend classes, business of the business. But I don't do well teaching via Skype. I know that. I mean, Debbie Derryberry is brilliant. Mick Wingard is brilliant. Richard Horvitz is brilliant. They can do it by Skype. I can't. Let's mention some other people who are teaching these days. Is Charlie Adler still teaching? You bet. Is Charlie yeah. teaching and Bill My Farmer. Yep. Yep. And Bill Farmer too. Yeah. Bill Farmer. Sue yep. Blue is Sue. Sue's teaching. I, I don't know about um, Sue. Okay. Sarah, Sarah Sherman, who's wonderful. Oh, Sarah's great. She's, she's great. Mm -hmm. So Derry, now, Derry, um, Derry, Derry yeah. Berry does yeah. online classes. Yep, she does. Now, now all the people we're mentioning here are working actors. They're they're. Yeah. They're people who are going into regular sessions all the time and doing this job. Yeah. That seems to be an indicator of a good teacher these days. Does yeah. anyone disagree with me on that? Well, I do. Well, especially in this, in this world. When I started, because I kind of took classes from everybody, because I didn't know. I, I started like five years ago, and I kind of took classes from everyone. And then somebody was like, no, you have to take classes with Bob Bergen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And his class was very different from the other classes that I had. People who were working, I don't think, I don't think working makes you a good teacher, right? Well, I'm also, I'd also like to share that some of the best acting teachers in the world, the the Sandy Meisners, the Stella Adlers, right. they might have started out as as working actors, but they they weren't at their prime teaching. They weren't necessarily working actors. I, 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 yeah. but I do, but I do recommend, look, we, I didn't have, we didn't have the internet when I was starting out. It, it was, it was much more difficult to vet teachers and coaches back then. Mm -hmm. uh, but all you got to do is go to the people who happen to have the career that you desire to have and right. ask them, who did you study with? Who are your, I mean, guys, I'm a, if my feeling is, I don't care if, if, if voiceover is your thing. You got one check for a class study improv, the greatest training any actor can do because it gets you out of your head and it forces you to commit. It makes you make choices. It is the best training, whether your thing is voiceover or Shakespeare or soap operas, study improv. Now, the three best classes that I've ever taken are Bob's, Bob and Colette Sunderman, mm -hmm. and Charlie Adler. And then I took a second city class with Kiff Vanden Heuvel. It was right. like, it was like improv for VO. And those yeah. three classes changed my life. That's great. Sure. Now, Bob took uh, lessons from the person I think was the best voice teacher in the business oh. and the best cartoon voice actor in the business, a man named Dawes Butler. Mm. Oh, yeah. Bob, tell us a little bit about Dawes. 
Well, Dawes was one of the sweetest, kindest. Mm. There he is. Um, that's <laughs> that's his workshop. You walked into his workshop is like a guest house. He had a big long table, and it looked like Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera had just exploded everywhere. It was wow. it was shells. It was it was stuffed animals. He had the original beanie puppet, and he wrote every script. And mm -hmm. we sat around a table, and Dawes. I'd studied voiceover for a few years before I studied with Dawes. He was the only or the first teacher to, to use the word acting. He rarely said the word voice. He said really? character. Yeah, he said yeah. character. He was all about timing and listening no, but it's and, 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 and cadence. And, you know, I, I, I borrow one of my favorite lines from Dawes I, I do in my class. All characters have a voice, but not all voices have character. Yes. So he was all about personality. And, and finding rhythms. Uh, over the years, it was Nancy Cartwright, Bill Farmer, Greg yeah. Burson, uh, Mona Marshall, um, Lucille Bliss would stop by, June would stop by, Penny yeah. Singleton. We're talking working people would stop by to work right. out on Wednesday nights with Dawes. Um, he, was, he was a gem. Let's talk about some of the other voice people of that generation because there was a time in this in this business when the entire voice pool talent pool for voices was about 35 people and a third of them were paul freeze dawes butler june foray don messi <laughs> and l blank um and uh bob could you tell a short really? version of yeah, your okay. of your meeting of mel blank could you tell a short version of that? Yeah, yeah. I We moved to L.A. when I was 14. I figured I'm just going to call the guy and say, I do a really good Porky Pig, and I'd like to help you retire if that's necessary. So <laughs> I, I, Is that what you said? I, yeah. well, really? I, well, no, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm going to make the long story short. I found okay. his phone number in the phone book. I called him up. Um, mm -hmm. He said, how did you get my number? And I told wow. him. By the way, I recorded the conversation. It's on my website. That's completely illegal. Don't try that at home, kids. But I, oh. I recorded the conversation. Yeah. During, during the course the of the conversation. conversation you, had, you recorded it? Yeah. During, oh. the, during, the, during the course of the conversation, he mentioned the name of the studio he was working at that week. So I called the studio pretending to be his assistant. And I got the time and the date. And I went to the studio and I said to the receptionist, we're guests with my mom, we're guests of Mel Blanc. And she said, oh, he's in that booth over there. And when I walked into that booth, I said to the producer, hi, we're friends of the receptionist. And she said, well, we could watch. This, can I ask? 1978. I was 14. Uh, Do the math. I'm 56. Um, well, it was before they coined the term. It was before they coined the term stalking. I know. It's easier to get okay. around. Yeah. So that's the uh, short version. Anyway, and Mel was I, I directed Mel Blanc. I got to direct the Mel Blanc. I directed June Foray. I and you yeah. know what you did? You just said, There's your microphone, do whatever you want. Right. Uh, you, you Mel was amazing and, and so let's talk about June a tiny bit here. Um yeah. because June was the of, of the people oh. of that generation, June was the last one we got to know and got right. to be around. And uh um I, just, I took Julie to see her at one point. You to, uh, to yeah, we 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 went out there. She, and and uh, it was very thrilling for uh, Julie, I know, but it was even thrilling for June, who was at this point, I think ninety eight, ninety nine. She was very, you know, and she was not working anymore, and she was very close to the end of her career. But she was very delighted to meet a young, attractive woman who now who said all you julie you said all the right things in that visit about how she had opened up the oh. field for uh women you know that there was a i don't even know uh, how i was able to make sound with my face that day. <laughs> i was so I'm i was sure. so moved being there and mark you gave me such a gift mark knew that i had always wanted to meet june okay. and that i never had and that she's you know a, a hero of mine and, and part of it was her, her versatility and her fearlessness and her grace. And part of it was that she knew it was okay to be funny. And I, I, I had, wait, wait, I had wait, this what moment with that? her. What do you mean by that? It's okay to be funny. She was so funny. And she started during a time when women oh, were supposed to right. be. I hear you. Okay, got it. Got beautiful. It. I, I hear you. Right. right? Not, we're certainly not supposed to make creature voices right. and pretend we're snoring. Right. We're right. not even supposed to have mucus. It's right. ridiculous. Yeah. Right. We're not supposed to fart. We're not supposed to do any of that stuff. Got it. She, you know, she opened doors for women not only with her her talent and her versatility, but by her truly, to me, her fearlessness in being funny 
And that was such a gift. And so when I, you know, Mark knew it was so important to me to meet her. And this was six weeks before her passing, Mark. It was six weeks before. And And shortly after she passed, we did a tribute to her. Bob was one of the producers with me of a tribute at the uh, Motion Picture Academy. Uh, for June, we had a packed house. We had everybody in the voiceover business there, practically. And the one of the things, I, one of the little artifacts from that evening, we got a, everybody in the off in the audience who was a female voice actress up on stage, and we took this photo, which is uh, amazing. Which is, which is <laughs> yeah. amazing. For those of you who yeah. can't identify everybody in it, left to right, it's Debbie Derryberry, Marion Massaro, Nancy yeah. Cartwright, yeah. Greg Griffin, aka yeah. Greg Lyle, Deborah Wilson, E.G. Bale. Let me tell the name, Secunda. E.G. Daly, Daly, Vanessa Marshall, Lily Tomlin. There's the photo of June <laughs> in the center. That's uh, the, And the yellow is Lorraine Newman. There's Teresa Ganzel, Audrey Wasilewski, Candy Milo, Julie Nathanson's over there, uh, Kari Walgren, Misty Lee, Laura Summer, Rusi Taylor, oh, and Katie they Lee. They are amazing. And, uh, and we, lost, we lost our friend Rusi a couple of months ago. Right. Uh, Rusi was not only... The, the voice of Minnie Mouse, she kind of was Minnie Mouse. Absolutely. Uh, and, and it's amazing that so many women now have careers in this business when there was a time when June and maybe two others were the only ones who got no, that kind of, kind of work. True. It's and true. Julie, Julie, I, got, I just want to, because you were up on that stage and so many of the people that we admire so much are up on that stage. I'm very good friends with Lily Tomlin. And when she, when they were having everybody go on stage, she looked at me, she goes, I'm not worth it to be amongst those ladies. <gasps> oh my yeah. God. Can you say that? I kid you not. Wow. Oh, Bob. Oh my God. Oh Please my God. tell Lily Tomlin we all said so, yes. So we, I'll, 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 I'll call there. her right now. More <laughs> we had. Because, I mean, I grew up with Lily Tomlin. Like she, if, she, if, no, if nobody belongs there, she belongs there. Yeah, I know. We, we, right. we, we had her. We I stuck her in, in and planted her. <laughs> in. She want. She oh wanted to God. see the entire show. We offered it to sneak her in, let her speak, and sneak her. She says, "No, I want to see the whole show." And we snuck her in. She was sitting behind me because I was tall enough to shield her, and nobody in the audience really <laughs> knew that she was there. And I got up on the stage, and when I introduced Lily Tomlin to come up, there was a gasp. There was for it was for a moment. It was of the spring, it was the springtime oh for Hitler. Was like, no, this can't be happening. <laughs> and then she everybody. came up. I can't believe the, she said that. Yeah, well, it was I just a very, know. very, very wonderful moment. Uh, people in the chat room, we will take some questions now. We're not going to make this run much longer, but if you uh, have a couple of quick questions, luck. you're going to ask people. Um, uh, let me let me start. I'm I'm behind in reading uh, stuff here. Uh, oh, Bob, post, I, that, that, every, that everybody everybody is agreeing that, that Lily belonged on the stage. People are Does saying she nice. Know, like what she means to people. She's very sweet. She's very shy. Oh. She's very humble. Right. And, and oh, she loves. Okay. She, she respects actors. All right. Here's some questions. Oh. Gary Kundal wants to know, Bob, how did Mel respond to Bob and his mom that day, the day when you um, walked into the studio? So uh, that was the day that I learned that some of his voices were sped electronically because he did Tweety and it wasn't mm. very good. They played it back and it was perfect. And oh. I said to his producer, <laughs> what did yeah. you do in the, in the playback? And she said, we've speed up a lot of his voices. We always have. Oh, God. So when I when I went to meet him, I wanted to sound like I was just kind of knowledgeable about this behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> and so I went up to shake his hand and I said, you're not as good as I thought you were. Uh Oh my I, God. Oh, I, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean, I meant to say that I didn't realize that for you to sound <laughs> like characters that you need help. No, I didn't mean help. <laughs> and with that, with that, he whipped out a piece. Of, if you look above me, there's his, there's his autograph right there. It's on my booth. He whipped out a piece of paper. I blew that up. He ha hands me his autograph and he says, I would, I would quit while you're behind kid. <laughs> but, but then, but then we had that little conversation. I said, I'm, I'm the guy that called you the other day. And he's like, Oh, oh how God. did you get in? And I said, well, I kind of, <laughs> Right and yeah, got myself in. And you know what? I, I met him one more time a few years later. I was with Bill Farmer at Samuel French and he was signing his autobiography. Oh, Samuel French. Is it a close now? It is. It is. Yeah. Oh. That, that, that was the only other time I got I got to meet him. Isn't that right. uh, uh, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Bob, can you do me a favor and never ever tell that story again? Okay. Can I sure. say something? <laughs> Secunda, sure. I know we, we were looking at that picture. And there's lots of white women in it and not a lot of black women. Deborah Wilson is like Deborah Wilson, Cree Summer, um, 
Kimberly Woods, like are my people who I've looked up to my whole life, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them weren't in that picture. Well, a lot of them. Didn't and that's show not your fault. No, no, that's not. No, no, that's not your you know, fault. You know, you know, a lot were invited. Yeah, everyone no, no, was invited. I, I'm, listen, listen, I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm just saying no. they weren't there. And so when people think of voice actresses, they think of Tara Strong, and they think of Grey Delisle, and they think of Julie Nathanson. And there are some people of color who are doing great too, like Cree. And so all I wanted to say was that when I first started, I've literally been doing, I've been doing this for five years and I'm here with you all who've been doing this forever. And you're all like, I understand that you all are legends and I love you. And I'm so happy to be here in your space. But I was telling Julie yesterday, like when I first started this journey, first started it and she would see me at an audition or a callback and she would just be like so happy to see me. And that was like everything wow. to me because I was like, oh gosh, like, do you know, Julie Nathanson is Julie Nathanson. Julie Nathanson, Chris Summer, all these women that would, Tara Strong, they would see me at auditions and they would just be like, ah, oh, you're here. I'm so happy to see you. You're new, whatever. You're here. And I'm just telling you, like, when, when, when Mark said in voiceover, like, people really come around you and love you and 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 it's not like i don't i don't think it's exactly like on camera i feel like it's different no. because we like your voice is your voice you know well all of those I, things are so true and 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 being able to to see you you know i met you really early in your career yeah. and you were so excited you had just been <laughs> signed at DSD and your your smile as it is right now completely infectious and your passion and your excitement and the the honor I could tell you felt just being able to begin in the industry was so beautiful and it was so full of gratitude. And I just kept rooting for you. You did. And, and, yes, and, the very and as I you totally you, did. And yeah. I will never and I forget that. To you that because I, I was like you, a fan of yours. And so when I would go yeah. to a callback and you were there. You have no idea what it meant to me for you to come out of the booth and be like, oh, Secunda, go kill well, it. I was excited the, the, to see you the, get there, you know? The, the thing you have to know, Secunda, is that I've worked with Julie and she comes out of the booth and she says to everybody, Secunda, it just happened. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. I, work with, uh, I didn't know thing. what it meant. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. like, you don't yeah. know me, but you were just like, oh my God, I'm so happy to see you. You know, this it's is great. It's, Go kill really, it. Secunda, it's one of those jobs where if you get to the microphone and you give them what they want, what you look like doesn't matter. Your age yeah. doesn't matter. How you're dressed doesn't matter. Uh, uh, I got notorious More on the Garfield insurance. show for hiring older actors. I would bring in people who were, I literally once time did a voice session where three of my actors were in wheelchairs. Uh, Jack mm -hmm. Riley, Marvin Kaplan, and Stan Freeberg, and and uh, and I Aww. and I and I think the business had a little wow. discrimination against older actors. So I, How, what, I, when I was wanted, that? What year was that? Well, this was the last twenty years. I mean, the last twenty. Right. I've been doing Garfield yeah. since nineteen eighty five. But the same thing happened yeah. with with Fred. Like he treated yeah. me the same way. Like they like we were on jobs together, yeah. and Fred wasn't like. Well, I'm Fred Tattershore, <laughs> and you're just some new lady. He was like, it's "Hi, sweetie." Like that. That not like like that. It's not like that. It's just kind of and you're amazing. Like, I, I it just blows you're my mind amazing. that. And also, um, Bob Bergen, when I took his class. You know, he never treated anyone like, "Oh, I'm Bob Bergen, and I'm better than you all." You know, he was like. I'm just an actor who's who's done some good stuff. And so now I'm going to try to teach you how to do some good stuff so you can get to where I'm at. And I was like, oh, gosh, like that. I just remember. Secunda, Secunda, you Secunda, Secunda, you ever notice that there is not a um, on on camera jobs? There's a call sheet. Yes. Where it's numbered and ranked. Right. Is it the, really? The, 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 yeah. Number yeah, one on yeah. the call sheet means yeah. you're the star of the show. Right. Oh, no and it's it's ranked. Like you said, oh, and wow. the sign-in sheet for a, for a um, voiceover job, 
whoever's in first. Right. That's right. I mean, that's so like Tara Strong. Like I'm different. doing. I'm doing. I got my first lead role, and Tara Strong was on the you know the call sheet like you just said. It wasn't about that. It wasn't about nope. who's better or worse or whatever. It was just you're coming in at nine. Tara's coming in at noon, and. I can't tell you guys how much that means to me that all of you guys like you, Julie and Fred, they're with my same agent mm -hmm. and they have, Oh, I mean, I, Fred gave me his number. The first job we worked together, he was like, here's my phone number. If you need anything, you call me. And I was like, this is effing the Hulk. This is Fred Tattachore. <laughs> like he's just he know me for two minutes. He's like, here's my number. We were talking about, we were talking about stuff. We had a lot of questions. Right. And I'm, I'm like, I don't have any, you know, right. I know, I mean, I but there's none of that ego, none of that. Oh, we, I'm because I'm nobody's Fred getting paid enough. You're just Secunda. <laughs> No, it, okay. It, 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 Remember, we were brought in that way too. Like when I came in, yeah. all these people that were big time. Yeah great voice actors who are now, I consider my right. friends, many of them right here. Uh, right. They did the same to me. They, they right. brought like, me like in. Like Rob and Phil. Yeah. In my Karen Secrets. No, they, these guys down here. You know, and well, it was like, that's. Honestly, yeah. part of it, part of it is because, I mean, I'm joking when I say nobody's getting paid enough to have an ego. Right. But part of it is true. <laughs> yeah. We're all getting paid the same. Right. You know, I walk, I walk in to do Evil Concarnate. I'm there with Frank Welker, mm -hmm. who's been on Scooby-Doo since 1969. You're getting paid the same amount. Nobody's better than anybody else. Right. If you you can be the star of the show, and Bob might come in and be a guest star on that same right. episode. One word that doesn't happen in on camera. That's no, true. Yeah. Bob was a guest star on um, Fast and Furious, and I'm a recurring. Right. And I was just like, right. <sighs> you know, you and know? the bottom line is, we are a mutual admiration society. Absolutely. I will sit there and I will listen to things come out of D. Bradley Baker, oh and I'm just God. like, oh, don't try it at home, folks. Right. Oh my God. Oh. Oh, Bob. He's Bob. Bob, how did the people who sat next to D in school ever learn a damn thing? <laughs> right? He sat or, behind he sat behind me oh in a movie God. once and yeah. did True. every sound effect on the screen. Let me, let's go back. Let's go back to the mail, the mail here. Uh, Jeff Burns confirms to us that yes, Charlie yeah. Adler's teaching and yes. reminds us that David Sopoloff <laughs> is also Great. Especially if you want to how to have the most the deepest voice in the world. Uh, know, right? Atlanta's fantasy world. Girl. It will ask us how many of you worked with June Foray. Show of hands. Well, the first time I ever did Porky Pig and Tweety, she was doing Granny on Tiny Toons. Really? And and I and I'd known I'd known June since I was a teenager. We were neighbors. Oh and God. just to have her there to be able to look over and she's giving me that thumbs up, you know, good, good. That was great. That was it was it was lovely. But I Mark, I've worked with her with you, I think, didn't I? Did yes, she? Did. Yes, yeah. she was in the Garfield that we had you on. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh yeah, I uh, I worked Alex, with I worked with her. Oh, sorry, got no, no. Alex Weitzman reminds us that in commercial VO, very Maryland listener is still running classes. Let me keep reading ahead here, folks. You're getting way ahead of me here. This is like looking at the the, the uh, chat here is like trying to read the credits on a Chuck Lorre show here. It's very <laughs> very tricky here. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Does most people are just telling us. Can? I have yeah. questions. I'll also say that J JP Carliac is teaching um, yes, our yeah. character oh, animation yeah. stuff right now. Oh, gosh. Yep. Mick yeah, Winnard. Amazing. Yes, that's Mick mm -hmm. Winnard as well. Oh, yeah. yep. How do you find him? Do you know? Voiceover Resource Guide. It lists everybody. <laughs> well, anyway, we're, we're going to dial this back here now and, and, right. and, and end this thing here. I want to go briefly around to uh, each of the uh, uh, members of our uh, dais here. Or this is is a, is a dais. If you're on screen, looking like no. looking like match game. Uh, I, uh, uh, Bob, uh, let's go. Bob, tell us. Uh, we can reach you at. Uh, let me get rid of both. Oh, Mary Lynn Wister. I got to get Mary Lynn Wister <laughs> off the screen here. Hold on here. You'll be taking. Where, where is? <laughs> oh. Uh, where Come on, Alex. I, I've go got away. to find. I've got to find the message to remove it from the screen. That's a, a problem ah. with the. Uh, oh. With this, uh, here we See? go. Okay. There oh, we hey. go. Hello. There we okay. are. Okay, Bob. Uh, hey. If if people are interested in your class or anything <laughs> else, these are this tell tell us about. Uh, is the is it 
worth getting on your wait list? Yeah, yeah because that. you know what? Here's the deal. Uh, not everybody has the funds when I call them. Some people have given up the dream of trying to do voiceover. And sometimes, you know, they've moved and they didn't give me their forwarding info. So I say get on my list. Um, I have a page on Facebook called All Things Bob Bergen. That's where I promote my classes outside of L.A. But I'm really accessible. I think all of us are pretty darn accessible on social media. So, yeah, if you're interested, get on. And I'll also, if people have demos they want me to hear, I'm, I'll be honest. It's just my opinion. But I'm more than happy to listen to demos and critique them. But if you play your demo for 20 different people, you get 20 different ways to change your life and, and, and go to the <laughs> poorhouse. So you got to take that into consideration. Okay. Good. Julie, uh, the, here's how to reach uh, you. Yes. Reach me at, at these places. Um, so, so I am, uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. I am much more verbal than I am apparently visual, but I'm, I'm getting, I'm yeah. getting, I'm getting oh, better. Yeah. On and I really, I actually, I really love Twitter. I know, um, you know, it's 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 fraught for some people, and and yes, yeah. there is some under the bridge troll action uh, that that does go on. But I, um, I really cherish being able to connect and communicate with people who, you know, either just want to have a moment of humor or have a moment about kindness. Um, and other people who, who really just want to talk about voiceover. Um, I love to connect with people there. It's really fun for me. And uh, my my Twitter is sort of a mix of, of obscure words and humor and kindness <laughs> and voiceover stuff. So <laughs> all things I like. And um, Instagram too. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting better at it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. Phil, hmm? they, 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 there yeah. you are. Yeah, it's all the same. <laughs> Okay. It's Phil Amar, two hours and little two hours in the end. And um, I, I exist on social media solely so that people don't Bob Bergen me. <laughs> uh, and Phil, show, up, show up at studios or at my house. Uh, uh, Phil, I'm sorry uh, I did that, Phil, by the way. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that I, did yeah, that. Yeah. Really I really apologize. That. Yeah. And obviously, Phil. like, throwing, you know, various things oh at you is probably not cool either so i apologize Julie, okay phil, phil phil would you take a moment here uh one of the things that all voice people should take is improv training they should mm -hmm. look at improv with the best improv groups and things you're in one of the best improv groups i have ever seen in my life would you tell them a minute a little bit about the black version and when they when oh, it yeah. might conceivably the might, might be performing know. again oh okay. yeah oh, oh oh there it is yeah um, behind me, there's a, a group of us, uh, friends of mine from the Groundlings and other uh, improv groups. We do a show. Well, back when there were live shows, we did a show once a month at the Groundlings called The Black Version, where we, um, it's an all-black cast. We take a suggestion from the audience of a classic or iconic movie, most of which are predominantly white. And then we oh, improvise God. on the spot. The out. Uh, Ow, you're hurting my ears. Uh, we improvise the black version of the movie, like we did the black version of Jaws, which was Catfish. Um, we did the, the black version of Silence of the Lambs called Why Are You Eating People? So everything is, you know, a twist. My, my joke is we our premise starts off vaguely racist and goes down from there. <laughs> Oh my God! Thank you, Phil. By the way, you know uh, I associate Phil with the Groundlings a lot because I used to work with them a bit, and he was—he's one of the more prestigious. Uh, the other day, I was telling someone about this panel, and I said, actually, said I, I apologize. I said, and it's going to be great. We got Bob Bergen, we got Julie Nathanson, we got Phil Hartman. Phil ah! Hartman, would be on the panel, <laughs> you which, did not. which would be a which would be that a very not. good trick. Anyway, you so know, that, that that is that is a um. A, a, a mistake I would I'm happy for people to make yeah. for me to be <laughs> lumped Hartman. in or associated with Phil Hartman. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it any way I can get it. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Secunda. Hi. Hi. Oh, that's I just want to be part of that <laughs> Phil Lamar thing with the black people. Okay. I would be happy anyway. Whenever social distancing is over, they'll do it again. We'll go see it, Secunda. Okay. In the meantime, people can reach you on Instagram and Twitter. These yes. are your your feeds, and you'd love to hear from your fans. They the comment. Read, 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 when you get home and, and or when you get off the air here, read the comment threads 
for the entire thing. You have a lot of fans out there, Secunda. Ah, and, do uh, I? Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh yes. So haven't, haven't you learned, Secunda, that I always tell you the truth? I know, but I mean, Phil Lamar and like... Bob Phil Bobby. has a lot of fans also. Oh my God. Yeah, you can both it's not, have it's not an fans. either or. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, 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 Fred, I mean, Fred, 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 Fred. Fred. Yeah. I'm talk Fred. We got Fred talking now. Fred, that's your that's your Twitter feed. There, are you going to get an Instagram page? I will. I will now. <laughs> hey, Fred, you're on Twitter now. Thanks to Tara Strong, I got, on the, I got on the on the Twitter. Yeah, we gotta bring you back though. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get you tweeting more. I will. I will. I will. I've, I've been kind of. <laughs> It's been crazy lately, but I'll. I'll you got a baby. You got better things to do with your time. You got baby. You got baby. You got the biggest effing baby thank on you. the planet. Oh, and, thank and you. Me, and me, I'm Mark Evanier. I uh, Hi, belong to a place called www.newsforme.com. The M E is my initials, and <laughs> you might want to want to check it out from time to time. Only because if we do any more of these, that's where I'll be announcing them. But I've been okay. blogging there for 20 years. There's thousands and thousands of messages, some of which are about cartoon voice actors, the history of the I got fortunate enough to work with people like Dawes Butler and Stan Freeberg and June oh, Ferre and, oh. and, and on all those great folks. And I've written about them okay. there. In the meantime, I want to thank uh, uh, each of you, Bob and Phil and Secunda and Fred and Julie. I hope you enjoyed this as much as Secunda did. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, no to the people- as much as I did. Anyway, and to the voice actors who I didn't ask to do this, if we do another one, there's plenty of great people out there. There, it, it, there's a lot of folks out there, and I, I don't want anybody to feel offended. I had to pick the, the stream yard only lets you have six people on the screen at the same time. That's what we're using for this, and so I picked five people. They're very good, and they will not be offended if I say there's there's lots of good people out there because no, no. And, and they're friends no. of them. They've spoken well of many of them here because the voiceover actors are the nicest people I've ever met. And I love hanging around them. It's one of the reasons we do these panels. And I hope that one of these days we can do one of them on a stage in front of human beings again. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. So, anyway. So, um, yes. And uh, and yeah, please applaud these people. But actually save some of the applause because really these days all the applause ought to go to medical personnel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Thank you, medical yeah. personnel. Thank you all for joining us, everyone. This show Thank you so much. will We'll repeat on YouTube ad infinitum okay. after this. Goodbye, Yay. everybody. Bye. Thank you so Thank you much. Bye. Thank you. Peace. <laughs> Take care. Thanks for watching.